Hey everyone and welcome to Storytime. My name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at the subreddit r slash pro revenge where people tell us their best stories on how they got revenge on some really bad people. Bad neighbor bullies struggling immigrants for 15 years. Their kid gets revenge and the bad neighbor loses custody of her kid and is forced to move out of their house. Spoiler alert, I'm the kid. A bit of context first. I'm an only child born in the USA to older parents, they were both 45 when I was born, who immigrated from Venezuela in the 90s. When I was two, my dad was shot in the head. He lived for another 13 years, but the incident permanently damaged certain parts of his brain, and he was a completely different person for those last 13 years. He went from being the most loving, incredible, caring, compassionate person around, to an aggressive, violent douchebag who blew up over the smallest things but only ever in his inner circle, me, my mother, or other close family. He always managed to keep his composure around strangers for fear of someone calling the police and him getting arrested, but he would later let it all out on my mum and myself, admittedly mostly me. After the shooting, he could never work again, and my mum was forced into the position of being the family's sole breadwinner. We lived in poverty for many, many years, because the USA wouldn't recognise her college degree and she couldn't afford to go to college again, so she couldn't work in her field and had to start at the bottom of the ladder. Dad eventually died when I was 15 of issues relating to his shooting. Now, when I was 7, my parents decided to move into a town with a better reputation for their schools than the one we were currently living in, so that I could attend a better school. They bought a house literally on the edge of town. Most of this town is incredibly expensive, but because on the other side of our street, and across the town line, there's a big complex of government subsidised housing, our area is much cheaper. This is the house with the bad neighbour. The house is a three family. For the last 16 years, we have owned and occupied the first floor, while the terrible neighbour lived on the second floor, until recently. The third floor has been occupied by over 10 owners and tenants over these years. None have stayed more than three or four years, and some have stayed as little as a handful of months. Now, the second floor woman, let's call her Karen, because obviously, she has a husband, who we'll call Bill, and they have a young son, Henry. Here's the story. When we moved in, Karen and Bill had already been here for a few short months. The three of us, us on the first floor, Karen and Bill on the second, and the original third floor owners, bought the house from the same crew, who had bought it and turned it into a three family, fixing it up in the process. Karen quickly showed her true colours as a bully. Over the years, there's been countless examples of nasty stuff she's pulled. Her husband, Bill, is an immigrant himself and doesn't speak very good English. He's very submissive to her and does whatever she wants, but in front of other people, makes himself out to be the physical dominant. In our first years here, they used to fight a lot, which we regularly heard from downstairs. They would yell, sometimes for hours, and occasionally, it seemed like things got violent. Henry was born maybe 10 years ago. He doesn't factor into the story until much later. But anyways, the point is, whatever Karen's done, she's always gotten away with it. Here are a couple highlights. My mum always took pride in how well she took care of our trash bin and recycling bin. Every month, she'd give them a quick rinse after that week's trash day, just to make sure that they wouldn't develop a smell or a colony of bacteria wouldn't move in. Karen, apparently, wasn't so diligent, and one time, her recycling bin got really nasty. And I mean, really nasty. So, she just left it out back. Context, behind the house isn't a backyard, it's just pavement with a parking spot designated for each unit, and began using ours. Lo and behold, ours started to get nasty, and mum quickly went from spending a quick three minutes rinsing out every month, to about 45 minutes scrubbing with soap and water to clean it out. Eventually, we decided we'd had enough, and she and dad sent Karen and the third floor tenants at the time a polite but firm email that basically said, whoever started using our recycling bin, please stop and use your own. You never asked our permission, and we take good care of it. And ever since you began using it, it's become disgusting. We knew it was Karen and Bill, but mum and dad figured it was more polite without a call out and they didn't want to start anything. Within a week, two things happened. Karen and Bill got a brand spanking new recycling bin and one week, 
we found ours had been mysteriously destroyed. Someone took a sharp object to it and cut it to pieces. We had no way of knowing who it was, but we had a pretty good feeling we knew exactly who it was. Yes, we had to get a new one. Because we had no evidence of who did it though, my parents didn't say anything about it. Back when we could afford a car, we haven't had one since our first few years here, we used our parking space out back. Every time that Karen and Bill hosted a party, which back then was surprisingly frequent, they would toss their trash over their balcony, into the general vicinity of the trash and recycling bins out back, which is literally right next to our designated parking spot. Most of the dents we had on our old 88 Toyota were from bottles thrown from the second floor balcony. We had windows break a couple times, same deal. Each time it happened, my parents would politely go upstairs, knock on Karen and Bill's door and respectfully ask them to stop throwing stuff over the balcony because we know you don't mean it, but sometimes it accidentally hits our car. Each time they went and did that, Karen and Bill stopped, but they would do it again until they got caught during their next party. Again though, my parents never wanted to escalate the situation, so they never justified taking it further than knocking on her door and politely asking them to stop. This is another example of Karen's utter bad behaviour, but it's also relevant for the revenge part of the story, so I'm putting it after the bullet point section. Our basement is shared between all three units. Each unit has its designated space boxed out, kind of like office cubicles, and there's some designated common area in between. Years ago, maybe like 8 or 9, Karen and Bill completely filled their designated basement cubicle, so they just started piling stuff all over the common area. Eventually, they developed this enormous pile of junk in front of Unit 1's, our unit, oil tank, for heating. My mum and dad never said anything because it happened over a long period of time and they didn't want to start a fight. And as far as I know, none of the third floor folks ever said anything either. But it got to the point where she and her husband were taking up common area space that was easily twice the size of their designated cubicle. Now, I'll be the first to admit that for many years, my parents and I weren't great neighbours either. We didn't bully anyone, but due to my dad's condition, he could be triggered by seemingly anything. And suddenly, he'd be in a rage and we'd all be yelling. I grew up in that generally chaotic environment. And, yeah, there were several times when the police were called to our house for noise disturbances. But we kept our problems to ourselves, and we were nothing but polite and respectful to all of our neighbours. Always. That said, you can imagine that our first priority was always my dad and his stability, and we had enough on our hands with that. So he and mum always swallowed their pride and avoided doing anything to antagonise Karen, no matter how bad her behaviour got. And believe me, there are plenty more stories on top of the ones I told above. After my dad died, I developed my own issues for a while, with mental health. Growing up in a constantly chaotic, violent, aggressive environment, took its toll on me, and for a time, I had deeply depressive tendencies. I struggled with suicidality for years, and eventually wound up graduating high school after 8 years of attending classes in some form or another. Similar to when my dad was sick, I became my mother's top priority at that point. So again, Karen and Bill kept getting away with all her BS. I got better though. Nowadays, I'm even off my psychiatric medication. I got my stuff together and graduated high school, and even college. I have my bachelor's, and I'm doing some postgrad stuff for a master's. Most of the way has been paid for by scholarships. But I recently decided that as an adult now, and therefore as someone with little more say in things around the house than when I was a kid, I have had enough of watching Karen bully my parents, particularly my mother, for so many years. I wanted revenge. Phase 1 of my plan was to ease my way into the adult condo administration dialogue. I began helping out more around the house, as in around the common area parts. I single-handedly redid the back porch's flooring. It sounds like more than it is, I just pulled out all of the floorboards and nailed new ones in. I replaced both storm doors, about 6 months apart, when each one began having problems. Different kinds of problems, it doesn't matter what they were. I also took care of some comparatively smaller things. I weed whacked out back for a couple hours, cut the grass out front a few times, and got up early so I could beat everyone else to the shoveling every time it snowed one winter. Not 18 to 19, but 17 to 18. I also began wheeling back everyone's recycling and trash bins after a trash week every week, not just our own. After the first two bullet point stuff, 
each time I sent out an email to everyone in the condo to let them know that I had taken care of it, and that all I asked of the other two units was them to reimburse me one third of the cost of the materials, on their timetable. Because of course, I hadn't given them the heads up, so it was only fair that I allowed them to pay when they can. The smaller stuff, from the last bullet point, obviously I didn't need to announce. The idea just was that over time, the neighbours would see me taking more initiative in things and be more active, which would just go on to justify me participating more in intercondo politics. I also made a point to keep conversations to emails so that there would be a written record of every interaction. Phase 2 of my plan ran pretty much concurrently to Phase 1, but had an entirely different purpose and was overall entirely different. I began gathering evidence of everything I could. I asked my mum to track down the old emails she and dad had exchanged with the neighbours, documenting many instances that Karen and Bill had pulled stuff. I went downstairs and took a video of Karen and Bill's mess all over the common area, particularly emphasising all the highly flammable wooden and cardboard stuff that they had piled up in front of our oil tank. I dug up and poured over the deed to our apartment, specifically the sections that detailed the rules around the common areas and limitations of our unit as compared to the others and vice versa. To my utter joy, mum and dad never threw out that old recycling bin that Karen and or Bill had messed up. Apparently because they just never knew what to do with it and never wanted anyone to ask questions. Naturally, I dug it up and took plenty of photos. I did one other evidence gathering thing that needs a bit more explanation. Karen and Bill are awful parents. Mum and I regularly hear the stuff they do to Henry through the very thin ceiling we have here. I'm decidingly not going to go into detail because even though I changed his name, he's still underage and I feel it would be disrespectful to him to do that. But let's just say it crosses far into the realm of child abuse. This is a topic I'm particularly sensitive about because I grew up in a bad situation myself, so believe me when I say this part is the most satisfying part of my revenge. Let's just say that every time I could hear stuff through the ceiling, I took out my phone and started recording until it stopped. Finally, phase 3 of my plan was to basically bait Karen and or Bill into a trap I set. That, as it turns out, would have humongous consequences for them. Mum and I have this old treadmill that we got for free. It's in the kitchen, and lately we've come to the conclusion that it takes up just a little too much space. We both use it a little, but not enough to justify keeping it. She wanted to toss it out, but I argued hard to keep it around, because I knew I could use it for this plan. It would be my only shot. Remember how I mentioned we haven't had a car for years? Well, eventually, I convinced mum to let me put the treadmill outside, in our parking space out back. I bought a large tarp to cover it with, so it would be protected from the rain, and I told her I'd start using it more if it was outside, because it's nicer to do exercise in the fresh air. I also sent out an email to Karen, CC'd to Bill, and the current third floor folks, asking her to move all the things in front of our oil tank in the basement somewhere else, despite the fact that those things had been there for many years. I justified addressing it now because I'm the one addressing it, and that's different from before, because before I was a child, and now I'm an adult who actively participates in the intercondo dialogue. I asked her to because the way she currently had it set up, it's a safety hazard, and I'm just following the rules. I further let her know that if she and Bill didn't take care of it within a handful of weeks, that I would have no choice but to take care of it myself. In the same email, I let everyone know that I was putting our treadmill in our parking space out back, so that if anyone had trouble with getting into their spot, to please let me know. The same day I sent out the email, I put the treadmill out back. Now, I figured nothing was going to change from all the other emails I had sent about matters regarding the condo's administration, and nothing did. She and Bill never acknowledged anything. The current third floor guy didn't want anything to do with going up against Karen, so he just thanked me for the heads up about the treadmill and said nothing else. It's also important to note here that my real reason for mentioning the treadmill in the email wasn't in case anyone has trouble getting into their parking spot. Needless to say, sure, a treadmill in a kitchen is pretty big and obnoxious, but a treadmill off to the side of an automobile parking space isn't really a big at all. Plus, I placed it in such a way that it wasn't in anyone's way, giving everyone ample room to manoeuvre around. It was just there, off to the side. The reason I mentioned the treadmill in the email was to alert her to its presence, 
and perhaps associate it in her mind with my request for her to move all her stuff in the basement. I also began using it, at least three mornings a week. I timed it so that sometimes, Karen and Bill would run into me as they left to drive Henry to school. Every time I saw them, I waved and greeted to ensure they'd notice me on the treadmill. Mom also used it a few times, but she wasn't part of my plan, so I have no idea if she ever ran into them while on it. Here's the other thing I did. I set up a video camera in our laundry basket. See, we have it permanently in the pantry, next to the pantry window that faces the back area. I buried it beneath the clothing so that from outside you can't even see it. But I bought a few massive, memory storage wise, not physically, SD cards and kept the thing recording 24 7 with a timestamp. For two weeks, nothing happened. The camera recorded nothing suspicious and Karen and Bill didn't move their stuff in the basement. Their time was up. So one night, I got up at around 1am when everyone else was asleep so nobody would hear me and went downstairs to move their stuff. Guys, I can't express to you how much I enjoyed this. I bought a GoPro, put it on my noggin and carefully recorded the entire hour and a half of moving stuff around. I took the enormous pile of junk in front of mum and I's oil tank and found a way to fit all of it into their designated storage cubicle. In the end, it was packed. I have mild OCD and I nearly had an orgasm at the end of how well organized, physically, everything was so that everything was neatly packed together and all the space was used at maximum efficiency. It was glorious. Packed from floor to ceiling and almost wall to wall all around. If you can just imagine one massive near perfect rectangular prism of junk, that's what I had created. It was a masterpiece. I was so proud. On the side the door was on, there was enough space to walk around to either wall, but you couldn't move into it anywhere. I got back upstairs to our apartment and couldn't sleep for the rest of the night. I was beyond excited. I wound up watching Infinity War to prepare for Ant-Man and the Wasp's then upcoming release. Sure enough, Karen and Bill took the bait. I must have been at school or work when they first discovered the basement because I never heard a thing about it. In hindsight, it's probably best I was out, even though I would have savoured those angry shrieks like nothing ever before. In any case, within a few days, we discovered our treadmill destroyed. Similarly to the recycling bin of the years past, it had been messed up. I can imagine they probably wanted to straight up take a hammer to it, but they didn't want to make much noise. So they wound up just tearing the thing apart with a really big and really sharp object. They had seen that we were using it, and aside from our trash and recycling bins, it was our only property that they had access to at that point. Several years back, I filled up the rest of the wall of our basement cubicle and installed a door with a lock. So our cubicle is now sealed off to everyone else, but the others are open and anyone can enter. Plus, I can imagine destroying a $1,000 treadmill is infinitely more tempting than a trash or recycling bin. So they went for it in retaliation for my stunt in the basement. After moving their mess in the basement, I started timing my treadmill use differently so that I wouldn't run into them. As soon as I saw it after they destroyed it, I went straight to the camera I had set up in the pantry. It caught the whole thing. In true fashion of their relationship, Bill brandished an enormous sharp object and single-handedly destroyed the whole thing himself, while she stood next to him and seemingly ordered him to do it. She basically kept pointing around all the parts she wanted him to cut up. With that in hand, I called the police, reported the incident, told them that my mother and I felt threatened by their presence, and we filed a restraining order against both Karen and Bill with the police that same day. I turned over all the evidence I had gathered of all their stuff over the years, and I also turned over the audio clips I had of Karen and Bill terrorizing Henry. I figured since it was all audio and no video, it wouldn't be enough to get him out of their care, but maybe it'd at least get the Department of Children and Families involved. Karen and Bill immediately claimed that I had broken a bunch of their stuff while moving it around in the basement. Stuff that they had no doubt had broken themselves. So I offered my GoPro recordings as proof that I had not, in fact, broken any of their stuff while moving it at all. The restraining order a person is allowed to file with a police report is always temporary, but you can always petition the court to extend it. Once mum and I did that, it was granted. At that point, Karen and Bill had been legally allowed to go back home for about a week, and since it became a longer term restraining order, they were basically not going to be allowed to live in their home for several years. 
so they made an obvious choice to sell the house and move elsewhere. Needless to say, selling a house you're not allowed to be near is a difficult task, and moving all your stuff out of said house is even more difficult, particularly when you have so much of it. They wound up coordinating the entire house's sale from afar, with their realtor being the only person who came around to show the house. Once it was time for them to move, some relatives of theirs came round and packed everything up and loaded it into a truck. Also, I was right. Based on my recordings alone, Henry wasn't taken from their custody. But DCF did get involved. I heard from their family that came around to pack up their stuff though, that Karen and Bill did wind up losing custody of him. They didn't say much as to why, but they basically implied that the abuse ramped up a lot after everything went down between me and Karen and Bill, which is the only part I feel guilty about. But in the end, I hope this is a situation where the end justifies the means. At which point, DCF was already sniffing around, so they wound up losing custody of him anyways. I have no idea where Henry wound up, but wherever he is, I have nothing against him and I hope he winds up in a much better situation than he was. Finally, I will say, for two such inordinately obtuse and disgusting human beings, they had been surprisingly decent family members. The few times I ran into them and made small talk when they were around, they were pretty apologetic about the whole thing. I got the impression that this isn't the first time they're apologising on Karen and Bill's behalf. I hope Henry is taken in by one of them and not chucked into the foster system. Here's hoping, kid. Hey everyone, I hope you're all having a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. If you did and you're not already subscribed, please do subscribe down below so that you never miss out on another video. Also comment down below what you thought of that story. If you want to check out some other videos, then click on screen right now or check out the playlists on the channel. But thank you again for watching and I will see you very soon.